On behalf of uh, the Baha'i Chair for Studies in Development at uh, Devi Ahilya uh, University, I would like to uh, warmly welcome Professor H.S. Shailendra, our speaker for today, uh, and all our distinguished participants who are joining us on Zoom as well as uh, on uh, through our Facebook uh, broadcast. Um, as part of uh, its lecture series titled Dialogues on Development, the Baha'i Chair is organizing this lecture uh, delivered by prof uh, Professor of Social Science at Institute of Rural Management, Anand, Professor H.S. Shailendra. And the theme of today's lecture is Regenerating Cooperatives as Institutions of the Future. The experience with cooperatives globally has been rather mixed. While in socialist systems, cooperatives became state-led initiative, losing their autonomy. In the capitalist economy, despite their business successes, cooperatives remained mere instruments of market forces, failing to make a major impact on the fundamental challenges affect afflicting the system like growing inequality, violence, alienation, and environmental decay. In both the systems, the role of cooperatives remained merely instrumental, which stymied the realization of their higher potential as an alternative way of organizing human society and life. The experience with cooperatives in India has been no different. The need for an alternative system persists given the acuteness of the prevailing socioeconomic challenge. In this regard, cooperatives as higher forms of organization poorly hold potential. In India, currently an expert committee is framing a new policy of for cooperatives to establish a cooperative based economy based on the slogan, Tahakar Se Samriddhi. Creating a cooperative based economy or society no doubt is desirable, but unless cooperatives are made to emerge in a more integrated way with new methods for organizing and governing them, they may continue to suffer as in the past. Professor Shailendra's lecture today will critically examine issues pertaining to cooperatives using both relevant theoretical and empirical analysis. Uh, before going further, just a, a short uh, introduction to uh, Professor Shailendra. Uh, professor Shailendra is a professor of social science at the Institute of Rural Management, Anand. His areas of interest are sustainable rural development, rural livelihood systems, micro rural finance and governance. He has published over 30 articles, co-authored four monographs and authored two books. Uh, before inviting uh, Professor Shailendra to uh, begin his lecture, uh, I, I'd like to inform our esteemed participants that uh, the format of this lecture will allow time for you to share your comments and uh, questions through the Q&A box. So please uh, type your question in the Q&A box. And after uh, Professor Shailendra's uh, uh, comments, he will take your questions one by one. So without taking more time, over to you, uh, Professor Shailendra. I think you need to unmute uh, your... Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, thank you, Dr. Arash. Uh, uh, good afternoon, all of you, because it's a, a honor and privilege uh, to be part of uh, this vibrant uh, forum. And uh, of course, uh, uh, 
I must compliment uh, Dr. Arash uh, for sustaining it. Uh, because he calls it as development dialogue. Because as a student of uh, development, we teach uh, 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 study development and all the kind, you know the topics uh, and uh, you know issues uh, that uh, he has been uh, you know encouraging people to talk about are really are uh, interesting and very relevant. And because uh, I am not sure how far I am going to contribute to this, uh, but definitely I feel honored and uh, privileged. Uh, so once again, uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Arash, and uh, you're doing good work. And uh, please keep it up. Right, uh, of course. Uh, yeah. So coming to uh, is my slide visible, Dr. Arash? Or I need to upload? Oh, I think you need to you need to share it. Oh, okay. Maybe because uh, I think it was uh, uh, it got. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Now uh, it is. Yeah. Uh, now it's visible. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is the uh, topic as uh, announced and uh, as uh, shared by Dr. Arash. Of course, uh, my content of the presentation is on these uh, lines because I'll very briefly uh, share as to what do I mean by regenerating cooperatives. Then, of course, uh, I will uh, look at uh, the issue of uh, need for cooperatives as alternatives, particularly in the context of the prevailing crisis. And then, of course, go into a little bit about understanding the history of uh, cooperatives, right? Cooperatives and collectivism, and uh, particularly in different systems, how cooperatives were uh, uh, co opted or uh, implemented and what kind of outcomes uh, we have got of cooperatives. Then I come to my main uh, argument uh, of cooperatives as uh, institutions of uh, future and cooperatives as higher forms of organization. Right. Then of course, uh, uh, an important aspect of any such exercise would be to tell as to how possibly uh, we can uh, you know, go about doing it. Eh? So therefore, I would be reflecting on this aspect of how we can usher in a cooperative-based uh, society where cooperatives would be playing a major role, right? How far we can do it, can we do it is also the question, but I will make an attempt before I uh, conclude my talk. Yeah, so I will uh, uh, take about, uh, as Dr. Rush mentioned, about 30-35 uh, minutes, and then uh, we can have discussion as uh, highlighted by uh, him. Right, <clears throat> because uh, in some sense, uh, uh, I would like to say that uh, though this is this presentation is not specifically based on any uh, paper as such, but uh, recently, of course, I've been reflecting on uh, cooperatives, uh, particularly in the post-COVID uh, period. And also, uh, currently, I am involved in a uh, research study involving uh, women cooperatives uh, in 20 states of India as part of a major uh, flagship program called National Rural Livelihood Mission. And, uh, that is uh, what also is uh, making me to reflect on this because having sort of you know studied uh, cooperatives because I was a student of cooperation during my uh, graduation days and subsequently I have been looking at uh, cooperatives uh, in various uh, parts of the country and, and also in other parts of the uh, world done studies done training participated in uh, several uh, policy uh, groups right about uh, cooperatives and uh, all of them have given me an idea as to uh, know how cooperatives uh, have been mobilized and uh, how they work and uh, why they succeed in certain contexts, why they don't succeed in other uh, contexts. So those kinds of uh, issues uh, sort of, you know, uh, have uh, sort of uh, in a way um, made me to also reflect the larger role, right? And incidentally, uh, I must also mention, uh, I was a student of uh, cooperation uh, when I was a graduate student. 
and i have also been uh, the president of our own cooperative we have a staff cooperative and for uh, uh, at least for three four terms uh, i have been uh, working as a member of the board of governors of our cooperative and also as a chairman right so that uh, in some sense also has given me the nuts and bolts of a, of a cooperative of a cooperative work or should work etc right various things so and possibly i can also relate to my own personal experience with these uh, larger issues right okay now uh, given the time constraint let me straight away come to the uh, uh, topic so uh, as i said uh, and titled it as uh, regenerating cooperatives as institutions of the future yeah uh, straight away i must say that uh, of course we know that there is also a government committee currently working on uh, new cooperative policy i wrote a paper for uh, uh, that committee also so of course they are in some sense attempting uh, how we can uh, uh, improve or reform our cooperatives so this attempt is not about reforming cooperatives as such under the existing paradigm right it's about uh, developing cooperatives as new forms of organization huh? so what i say is with new root and with new crop it's not the old uh, root and maybe with a new crop or uh, sprouts like that huh? it's new root and uh, new crop so with uh, new vigor uh, and new methods of uh, organizing right and uh, of course the purpose is uh, that uh, we uh, possibly move towards uh, creating a cooperative based uh, society uh, given the uh, challenge that is there that of uh, you now looking for alternatives and organizing our society on an alternative basis so that we overcome uh, the challenges uh, that are uh, sort of you know afflicting our uh, system particularly the the mainstream capitalist system yeah so this is in brief about uh, this aspect of regenerating cooperatives of course i will come to this uh, uh, subsequently but uh, uh, as to how i have come to uh, write uh, uh, think about this uh, topic right uh, and what is the rationale uh, uh, both empirical and uh, theoretical i must uh, explicate that so 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 therefore uh, uh, i would like to highlight some of the larger issues uh, that are uh, sort of you know linked to this topic right one of course which is uh, well known to all of us is that the present uh, system uh, particularly the dominant capitalist system is faced with several crises right and uh, that crisis uh, uh, has manifested in several ways several forms so i have listed them out and which are all uh, well known and uh, people discuss at various uh, levels and uh, there are also uh, exploration uh, as to how we overcome these uh, problems right so of course these are all well known as i said well known uh, challenges of uh, uh, the dominant system right uh, one problem of course is that uh, uh, it's always in crisis right of course uh, we could also see how during uh, uh, covid uh, which was uh, another kind of a crisis and how uh, the the major crisis fundamental crisis of uh, capitalism also got aggravated right even if we take the issue of health system right so in many cases uh, countries uh, were forced to resort to some alternative ways some countries even nationalized the uh, uh, you know the health system uh, because um, the private system was not responding uh, to the crisis right so that was telling us that if the crisis is going to become acute what possibility might happen of course we all hear about market failure and state failure etc but if the crisis on these lines aggravates uh, we might end up in a situation like what happened uh, during the covid right when the health system was not able to though of course subsequently with the state uh, uh, coming into play giving uh, the needed support etc so the system uh, in some way worked right but otherwise uh, uh, we really experienced as to uh, what can be the outcome if we allow the crisis to reach an acute uh, stage yeah so therefore all these things right whether it is the the instability uh, 
the dichotomy is the kind of you know dichotomy that disparity that is there and of course also the we again get uh, frequently the the climate report uh, which is uh, highlighting us the environmental problem right which is mainly due to the excessive growth led uh, paradigm uh, that is part of this uh, system which is uh, in fact even threatening the uh, human existence unless uh, uh, we reverse it uh, or even go for some alternative uh, mechanisms right and uh, at the same time we also hear that uh, after world war uh, the number of conflicts and wa uh, wars have in fact have increased right uh, which is also due to growing inequality and uh, deprivation and uh, of course the, the market system uh, which is uh, the major instrument uh, which capitalism uses so is supposed to work in a decentralized way but the system at a larger level uh, in fact is highly authority authoritarianism based and also centralized centralization based which goes against uh, democratic uh, values true democratic values so though democracy could be there but it will be only a kind of a facet right uh, for its own uh, kind of uh, uh, attaining its own kind of goals right and at the same time at the core of course uh, we see variety of uh, alienation of uh, human beings which precludes the full fledged development of uh, uh, human beings yeah so these are all the the kind of you know the crisis uh, uh, that uh, capitalism is uh, faced with and uh, of course therefore we are looking for alternatives and uh, in that direction right uh, in that direction uh, several attempts are being made several uh, thoughts are there of course why this uh, kind of a crisis that is also well documented right since the days of uh, marx right so the core reason of course is the logic of capitalism which goes by profit greed and accumulation of course that is never ending accumulation is never ending and therefore growth become growth becomes important profit becomes important and uh, it's a kind of a, therefore a, a vicious uh, cycle and as i said another reason is that it is highly centralized and autocratic it does not uh, allow any kind of a really uh, plutocratic kind of you know plutocracy the uh, diverse kind of uh, system diverse kind of organizations that could be there right so it uh, specifically uh, ba is based on few principles and it relies only on them right so so therefore there is as a result lack of collectivism sharing solidarity and such aspects which become necessary to overcome scarcity and crisis but uh, uh, given that it is uh, based on profit and also individualism it uh, it uh, attempts it makes attempts to preclude all those alternative mechanisms uh, which can be part or which can also give better solutions right so that is how the uh, capitalism works and those are the reasons as to uh, why uh, the the continued why the continued uh, uh, continued uh, crisis uh, persists right so therefore in terms of the alternatives uh, of course there are various uh, thoughts of course one uh, is uh, since of course technology now has become a major uh, kind of a you know instrument and a major way to resolve many of the technical challenges it is uh, now uh, in fact thought that technology possibly can resolve all the problems right whether it is the problem of scarcity sharing all in environmental problem and human even other problems right uh, human problems like uh, corruption and many such thing it is now thought that we can have technology and resolve all those uh, uh, crises right but uh, but uh, if one really understand of course technology is useful but whether technology can be the solution uh, that is uh, doubtful and there are good amount of uh, arguments on these lines right and then of course another uh, uh, kind of an argument is mere reformism yeah of course there are problems so let us reform right uh, uh, we can uh, bring in maybe better laws better ways of accountability etc of course without changing the basic uh, premises of uh, capitalism there is also of course institutionalism which tries to bring in 
social dimensions into economic aspects and they say we may reorganize some of the institutions based on uh, particularly uh, social and such dimensions and possibly we can uh, moderate uh, the uh, problems of uh, capitalism. Degrowth is also there. And then of course, uh, socialism in terms of the upper dialectical frictions uh, uh, become acute. Uh, naturally, of course, the, given the conflicts, the system will uh, transition itself into a better system. Of course, socialism is visualized in that sense as a solution, uh, as a progressive uh, um, uh, system uh, for the ailing capitalist uh, system. Then there are also suggestions or uh, alternatives mooted on the lines of you know, encouraging cooperatives and uh, collectivism uh, because uh, capitalism insists on uh, individual rationality. Individualism assumes a, a high level of uh, importance there, right? So therefore, cooperatives and collectivism come as an alternative uh, to uh, individualism and possibly, so therefore that can help uh, overcome several uh, problems and challenges. So it is in this, in this uh, kind of, you know, uh, perspective, uh, cooperatives and collectives also emerge as, as an important uh, way forward or as, as an important alternate. Right. Yeah. So let me therefore uh, straight away come to uh, the issue of cooperatives and uh, collectives. Of course, these uh, terms are uh, used uh, interchangeably. Right. Uh, but of course, uh, cooperatives uh, have been seen in different systems. Of course, we have seen cooperatives in the capitalist system, in the socialist system, and also in mix, mixed economies like uh, India, right? And of course, the experience also is uh, quite uh, uh, diverse, right? Of course, uh, as part of uh, capitalism, right, cooperatives uh, uh, started in, uh, of course, in Europe. Uh, we know the story of uh, Rockdale Pioneers, the Rifeson Cooperative. of Robert Owen, which preceded uh, even these uh, formal cooperatives. Yeah, so they were seen as instruments uh, uh, because capitalism was uh, emerging and all the uh, negative followers of capitalism were being felt by the uh, laboring class and uh, and such other uh, uh, you know, disadvantaged groups. So they saw possibly organizing cooperatives as a mechanism to mitigate these uh, uh, consequences of uh, capitalism. Right. Of course, they in some way also uh, became popular and uh, uh, capitalism in some sense co-opted uh, uh, cooperatives uh, because uh, they were not able to resolve various problems, including poverty and several things. Right. So they need to also therefore encourage some um, uh, alternative mechanisms. So therefore cooperatives in some way became an integral part of the capitalist uh, system. But of course, as capitalism grew, uh, cooperatives also grew. Uh, but of course, in the we know the the larger logic of uh, uh, capitalism because cooperatives works on a different uh, basis, whereas uh, the capitalism with market as the dominant mechanism works uh, differently. So, therefore, cooperatives there uh, were encouraged, as I said, just to give certain protection to some of the people who uh, face difficulties rather than as an instrument uh, for the uh, larger purpose of uh, capitalism, because uh, the elements of cooperative, cooperatives, right, they are in some sense are not in sync with the, uh, for example, like uh, collective ownership or, uh, or mutual profit, etc. They are not in sync with the, uh, the principles of private property or uh, accumulation or, or uh, profit making. So therefore, they were given some scope uh, so that at least some of these uh, crises and the problems could be addressed, but not as a, um, as a mainstream instrument, which would uh, in fact determine the, the larger contours of capitalist society. Capitalist society would uh, grow or has developed largely based on its own essential logic, which is counter to the uh, cooperative logic. Right. Uh, in fact, in, uh, uh, some of the liberals uh, very strongly argue that uh, cooperatives, in fact, are inefficient organizations and they cannot be there in, in, even in uh, 
capitalist kind of a system uh, where efficiency is uh, important right and uh, we cannot be surviving on cooperatives uh, which are in some sense are uh, not compatible and uh, of course uh, in socialism uh, again of course though initially there was some kind of a uh, confusion whether uh, cooperatives uh, match uh, the principles of socialism whether they can be part of socialist uh, kind of a system uh, but that got uh, resolved and cooperatives uh, were adopted uh, in a very uh, you know, uh, ex uh, extensive way in all these uh, countries uh, and uh, they were used as part of the planning system there planning system and uh, cooperatives of course uh, uh, did help of course they were supported by state in a very significant way and uh, they did help in managing some of the um, initial problems particularly also in taking care of the basic needs of the society food employment housing and many such things but of course the major problem as has been highlighted is that uh, uh, the uh, socialist state uh, they were uh, driven by the state and they were also used as instruments of the state for planning and even for surplus extraction right so therefore cooperatives uh, they were seen as an integral part uh, but were used uh, in some sense um, for uh, the other purposes right so and therefore cooperatives lacked autonomy right and they could not prevent the the bureaucratization both at their own level and even at the larger level which was unfolding as the socialist system was growing right right so the cooperatives therefore could not act as, uh, as a, though they have their own kind of strengths but they could because of this uh, coercive effort and top down approach uh, they could not uh, uh, act as a, you know uh, as a autonomous agencies which could assert their agency uh, uh, that's what happened in the socialist system of course in, in mixed economy uh, we also decided that probably it would be useful to adopt uh, cooperatives right the british had started uh, cooperatives in india especially to give relief to the peasants and once uh, we became free we started planning uh, cooperatives uh, in fact became part of our planning exercise and also as uh, welfare efforts right uh, variety of uh, services to be provided uh, through cooperatives though we also aimed at cooperativization of rural economy right so all those larger goals which would ultimately lead to establishment of cooperative socialism right and uh, uh, of course numbers uh, were impressive uh, we could attain a good uh, you know achievement in terms of the numbers and spread but again uh, uh, all official and uh, other assessments right very clearly indicate that uh, we have cooperatives but we, we do not have a cooperative movement because it is state driven the cooperatives lack autonomy and state again also here has used them as tools uh, for uh, dispensing patronage right uh, political and other kinds of uh, patronage and uh, cooperatives have failed to work as as a real democratic and autonomous uh, institutions so therefore uh, they were again merely instruments pro for providing certain services and uh, welfare inputs as part of the larger planning rather than as autonomous institutions which can be empowering and which can possibly strengthen the democratic aspects right and uh, of course this has been the assessment of uh, most of our uh, uh, most of our uh, committees and also as i said uh, scholarly work and uh, of course as uh, reforms have grown uh, uh, cooperatives during the planning era they had at least some good amount of uh, no uh, good share in various sectors but now cooperatives have become weak uh, and uh, there are attempts to revive them and also even frame liberal cooperative laws right liberal cooperative laws yeah uh, this is of course the current status of uh, or the recent status of cooperatives uh, in india right uh, of course india has one of the largest number of cooperatives and also membership uh, more than uh, uh, no 8.5 lakh cooperatives and in terms of the membership of course which has also grown uh, uh, impressively 22% of course uh, there are also arguments that much of the membership is uh, is dormant and it is because of the top down approach these numbers are achieved right uh, so but uh, 
again, other kind of economic kind of assessments is many of them are uh, weak and, uh, but there are also several success stories, including uh, on the place where uh, I belong to Anand, right? Amul cooperatives are uh, well known. Amul cooperatives have been uh, replicated uh, uh, all across uh, India. So they are one of the relative success uh, uh, stories. So there are uh, such success stories, but uh, overall, right? the position of uh, cooperatives uh, has been uh, uh, or the success or the outcomes of cooperative effort has been uh, poor uh, and uh, and uh, um, and uh, and you know, state support and interference has been one of the major uh, kind of a stumbling block in their emergence right of course this is uh, again uh, a global picture uh, though for 2014 that is the latest i could uh, uh, collect yeah, uh, it is also same story, mm, right? Cooperatives, uh, of course, in terms of membership and numbers, impressive. But when it comes to their uh, overall uh, performance or outcomes, uh, that is limited, right? In terms of, of course, the employment share globally, the employment share of cooperatives is just 0.19%. Uh, I, I don't know whether the audience is able to see 0.19%. And the share of cooperatives overall, uh, though uh, varies in terms of GDP, it's globally it is 4.3 percent, right? Yeah. So uh, uh, the numbers, are, as I said, numbers are impressive, but in terms of the actual impact, right? Uh, uh, cooperatives leaves much to be uh, their performance leaves much to be desired, right? So this was the statement uh, of uh, one of the uh, major uh, official committee uh, uh, called All India Rural Credit Survey Committee in 1954. After looking at cooperatives, uh, cooperative experience for 50 years, it had uh, argued that cooperation has failed, but of course cooperation must succeed. This is what uh, that committee had argued, right? Yeah, so in some sense, uh, uh, therefore the assessment, uh, uh, right? Uh, this statement summarizes the overall kind of experience of uh, cooperatives in countries like uh, India and maybe elsewhere also, right? Uh, right, they are given mixed results at best. And uh, there are, of course, many cooperatives which have succeeded here and there and hold good lessons. And of course, uh, as I said, liberals all over, they argue for dispensing with cooperatives while institutionals, institutionalists argue for reforming them, right? Uh, uh, of course, uh, several attempts for reformation have been made uh, all over, but uh, again, the, the results remain uh, mixed and particularly in the light of uh, liberalization and globalization, uh, the, the, uh, the earlier level playing field has been disturbed and cooperatives as a result have suffered. So some of them have uh, done well, including Amul cooperative, but in general, uh, the uh, globalization and the liberalization period has not been favorable towards cooperatives, right? Yeah, so, so therefore, some therefore say, no, no, we dispense with them, maybe have newer uh, kind of organization, etc., right? And others still keep arguing, we reform them, right? So my own assessment, of course, is that, uh, of course, despite the failure, cooperatives are relevant because uh, they have failed for various reasons, but they are higher form of organizations when they were uh, adopted, even in capitalist society, because they have some uniqueness, right? So we are looking for alternatives for the crisis and cooperatives and elements of uh, uh, collectivism has those potential, right? So therefore, for me, cooperatives, uh, right, as I said, given my own understanding, cooperatives can be the institutions of the future, right? And therefore, we cannot, because of this experience, of course, all forms of organizations also have failed. It's not that cooperatives are alone, right? So therefore, we cannot throw baby with uh, bathwater, right? So therefore, in terms of the future, of course, theoretically, of course, give, going by the materialistic dialects, uh, if uh, contradictions uh, become acute, maybe uh, there could be transition to socialism if uh, dialectical materialism works and cooperative may emerge as part of the uh, socialist system, right? Of course, pending any such kind of a transition, I propose 
Of course, here cooperatives as an alternative system and cooperatives as institutions of the uh, uh, future. Of course, how we can we can usher in before I um, give certain uh, steps or certain principles. So let me uh, highlight as to why I say cooperatives are a higher form of organization, right? So, uh, uh, of course, there are several principles that have been identified. So to me, uh, uh, of course, we can also add many more, but at least these seven to me are important uh, uh, principles on which cooperatives are organized. And it is these principles, right? So which uh, are these elements? which uh, make them as uh, you know, a different kind of organization, organizations of a different nature. So which are definitely much better than uh, other forms of organization and which hold potential to resolve some of the challenges uh, that uh, I highlighted earlier. One, of course, people come together for that purpose there is reciprocation right and of course solidarity also solidarity uh, which gets displayed at various level because cooperatives can be formed at various level so therefore solidarity gets displayed at various uh, levels at uh, various levels and uh, and of course cooperatives uh, as we all know they were organized not for profits uh, they're organized for other reasons, basic, me, meeting basic needs and such things. So therefore, the economic logic, uh, or the logic of capitalism, which goes by profit and accumulation, are not uh, inherent in cooperatives, right? So they may work for profit also, but that is not the goal. So that is another uh, aspect, right? That, but they can work equally efficiently, they can work equally uh, well, right? Uh, without this uh, uh, logic, Right, which is the major uh, distorting uh, factor, right, or which is the major source of uh, the uh, crisis, right, and then of course cooperatives are again need based essentially, right. Uh, cooperatives needs to be organized in sectors or in areas where there is need or for supporting the basic needs, right. They are not uh, agencies for simply for production for production sake, right, or for profit sake. You produce anything, we will produce anything. Wherever there is profit, we will produce anything. That is the logic of capitalism. Whereas cooperatives get organized based on the needs. That is another uh, principle. And then, of course, cooperatives also work on the basis of collective ownership of property and resources, which is against the individual uh, property principle. And then, of course, uh, uh, when cooperatives, because they are member based, Right, they are for the members at the grassroots level when members participate actively. Uh, so they eliminate or overcome again some of the fundamental um, uh, problems of capitalism, like the exploitative relations between capital and labor and the alienation. So here people are involved, right? They are directly there as members of the organization, and that help overcome a uh, problem of exploitation and alienation. And of course, also cooperatives, uh, right? Uh, uh, they organically they can be linked at various level, uh, uh, integration of vertical and horizontal nature, right? Whereas the corporates, though they may have their own associations and uh, and such things, but organic link uh, becomes possible in the in the cooperative things, and uh, that is another uh, kind, that is another form of cooperation, cooperation among cooperatives, but economically that kind. That gives uh, not only scale and uh, scope, uh, but also some kind of a robustness uh, for cooperatives. And uh, all said and done, again, cooperatives have to work on democratic principle. So when I say that uh, the capitalist system is uh, highly centralized and uh, autocratic, whereas cooperatives are a counter to that uh, principle, right? So therefore, if you combine all these aspects, if there are many more, uh, definitely they are uh, a higher form of organization. They are a different kind of an organization. They have failed because it's not easy because humans, probably human civilization has not a form of organization which goes with these kinds of uh, principles, but uh, even if we have failed, but that has given us a lesson because everyone definitely highlights that these are the strengths and we must bank on them 
and as a result co produce emergency institutions of the future institutions for reorganizing the human society and how do we usher in uh, possibly uh, this alternative system based on uh, cooperatives what are the elements in my own uh, 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 view right uh, of course it needs a, a, a kind of you know integrated effort it's not that easy of course we all know like the argument right it is easy to if uh, you know theory or philosophy but ultimately the challenge is in really you know in the practice and in in changing the world but still let me uh, uh, explicate my uh, principles or my elements uh, as to how elements of uh, you know or steps towards this one of course yeah cooperative must come as an ideology right uh, as a higher form of organization why why it should come Uh, the, the reason is that there is a need there is a compulsion uh, it's not that uh, uh, it's just uh, as an ideal uh, ethiopian idealistic uh, thing uh, the uh, world is faced with crisis right there is a need and compulsion to work differently think differently organize differently and because of these principles cooperative hold uh, uh, the potential and uh, of course then how do we mobilize uh, community of course there have been earlier coercive effort top down effort etc of course here it would be much more proactive member uh, mobilization uh, uh, through including social movements right so uh, and why why because cooperatives uh, collectives cooperatives are going to be organized based on needs for livelihoods and for dignity right not just for the sake of profit or for the sake of uh, uh, you know accumulation right so therefore uh, uh, the, they need not be coercion but if we can link it to the livelihoods and needs so more proactive more bottom of cooperative formation would be possible right of course then uh, in such a society it's not a piecemeal a kind of a thing as we have attempted cooperatives should be there across all right they need to be integrated and cooperative has to come as a way of uh, life right and uh, using again the earlier uh, principle i mentioned cooperatives therefore they can be local they can be at the grassroots and at different levels but they need to be integrated for overall balancing and mutual sharing at different levels right so uh, cooperation at the grassroots level and also cooperation among cooperatives for this balancing and mutual uh, sharing of course what about the role of the state and civil society for that matter right uh, possibly right uh, of course uh, they would complement and supplement cooperatives to emerge in this uh, in this way and uh, maybe of course if organized on these principles and uh, and uh, the logical end of that would be uh, what we may call as evolution of cooperative uh, socialism right yeah so those are my basic uh, arguments uh, so therefore let me conclude uh, by saying that yeah uh, there is a multi dimensional uh, crisis uh, that is uh, looming large right which is threatening us and uh, we need to organize ourselves differently and uh, possibly cooperatives hold the hold the potential and society therefore has to possibly learn and internalize uh, cooperative way uh, uh, of uh, life and uh, right and working and uh, uh, and in terms of uh, practice uh, cooperatives are elevated uh, elevated uh, from the present uh, you know kind of challenges and constraints that they face uh, so that uh, we are able to build an alternative system which is different from what it is yeah so i conclude my talk here so i thank uh, uh, all of you uh, and dr arash uh, for patiently listening i may have exceeded uh, my talk by few uh, though i was hoping for some 35 40 minutes but uh, it's always <laughs> like that right and we as teachers are used to giving lecture for 90 minutes uh, not for 30 40 minutes and uh, dr araj is a strict uh, a strict master i know right yeah so i conclude and i thank all of you and uh, in case there are any questions or any comments uh, of course as i said uh, this is a loud thinking uh any any kind of argument uh, uh i i welcome 
uh, of course, uh, uh, if things even can be critical, I would even welcome. Uh, as I said, I, I've been a student, I continue to be a student, and I would like to learn from uh, others' view. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Professor Shailendra. I, I have a quick question of my own before we go on. I see the num questions are piling up. So, Professor, if you can just uh, help us understand what were the challenges with uh, cooperatives and how do you think as we move on, those can be uh, overcome? Uh, for example, in your presentation, you mentioned inefficiency. Do you, yeah. But you also mentioned that it's not necessarily inefficient. There are efficient uh, cooperate. Yeah. So it's just helpful if you could give us a sense of that. Yeah, that's right. See, I was, of course, a part of one committee to restructure cooperatives, an RBI appointed committee. And one of the reasons was how do we make them become efficient like that? Huh? Uh, because, uh, because of the present, present structure, etc. Of course, in the Indian context, I will reflect from the Indian context and my experience. Right. See, when I say that uh, cooperatives, of course, can be at different levels and they can be integrated. And I also uh, possibly uh, said that uh, that can be based on principle of democratic federalism. What do I mean by that, right? So as a part of top-down approach, what happened? Cooperatives uh, you know, were promoted you know, in a target-based way. Every village will have a cooperative. Every sector will have same kind of a structure, right? Uh, irrespective of what is the, uh, you know, the economic uh, scope or logic there, right? Uh, there need not be possibly, what I think is that, like, for example, viability is an issue as a business entity, right? Ultimately, of course, they also have to work as business uh, enterprises, producing, marketing, selling, etc., right? If not uh, making excessive profit, at least they have to be viable. So size becomes an important issue, right? So, so we organize cooperatives irrespective of the size, right? So we, we may have to rework this thing. So we say that we have three-tier structure uniformly all across uh, all the district for all sectors of cooperatives. No, we need not, right? right? So we may have to see what is the viable way of organizing, right? So if only a branch or an extension, of course, members can, all people can be members, all villagers can be, or all community members can be members of the cooperative, but a cooperative office with full-fledged thing need not be present, right, with uh, uh, excessive cost. So that is one way, right? That is uh, one way of uh, uh, looking at it, right? And... Uh, <clears throat> So that, that would help uh, possibly in terms of working some of the structural constraints in the, in the efficiency. That is how I have seen also why cooperatives have suffered because they many of them were unable to have the minimum size. So therefore there was attempt even to in, in India to amalgamate them or merge them so that there is a kind of a uh, viable size, threshold size. But even that was done in a top-down way, uh, like that. So that is one, one element of uh, uh, this uh, efficiency. Second, of course, is, uh, uh, is also because once they are into some kind of you know, economic activity, uh, business, production, et cetera. So <clears throat> though in a local uh, cooperative, they can use various uh, uh, you know, local resources and methods. But once they want to operate on a larger scale, some bit of professional element has to come in right so which uh, uh, which which is necessary to make them work uh, no in a vibrant way efficient way like that so so those elements also need to be uh, their management right that is what uh, we are here we are called as rural management institution we are supposed to help cooperatives and such institutions to overcome their managerial problems so that they work efficiently in a sound way for the benefit of members these are two aspects i can uh, possibly share based on my uh, experience Thank you, uh, Professor. Now I'll go to some of the questions. I have been seeing recently the emergence of many farmer producer organizations in the form of cooperatives. 
So I was wondering, what are your thoughts on FPOs? Yeah, FPOs, right. Yeah, of course, FPOs, yeah, of course, we are also doing a good amount of work and our own students are working also, our PhD students are working on these FPOs, right. So we need to make one distinction, right. Of course, many of our rural cooperatives basically are FPOs, farmer producer organizations, right? Even the sugar cooperatives, the dairy cooperatives, they were all farmer producer organizations, right? But uh, one thing that uh, also distinguishes the current crop of FPOs is the legal form. Some of them, Right. Of course, we, as I said, we are trying to liberalize the laws to reform them. And so we have also made a cooperative form of organization part of company law. They can take advantage of a company act and also the advantage of a cooperative. So they are called as whatever as companies, right? In some way, we can call them as cooperative companies, <laughs> FPCs, farmer producer companies, right? Right. Okay. So... <clears throat> So the liberalized liberal acts, uh, so even this is a liberal uh, kind of a thing to make them become market friendly uh, because cooperatives per se, right, have certain uh, disadvantages, making them become market oriented, market friendly would help them. So though the earlier uh, cooperatives are also former producer organization, now this new crop includes new legal forms, former producer companies, right? Uh, of course, um, Dr. Alag, who was the chairperson, so they recommended and they at the same time also retained, uh, they also at the same time retained uh, the essential feature of a cooperative in that uh, company act, one man, one vote only, right? Though there can be other patronage based kind of incentive, etc. So the democratic character needs to be retained, right? So now, of course, I have been also following these uh, 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 FPCs. FP was, as I said, the earlier forms I have already highlighted, whether it may be dairy cooperatives, sugarcane cooperatives, marketing cooperatives, variety of them, but the new crop of them. What I see is, is again, like a government said that we will in, in a few years, we will form 10,000 FPOs, right? And ask NGOs and all other agencies to come forward and support in forming these FPOs or FPCs, right? And uh, so therefore, the top-down approach, the, in, uh, the state interference, et cetera, right? Uh, which was earlier the hallmark of uh, cooperative working, right? In the Indian context is now uh, they are even in these new forms of cooperatives. They are legally different, but in terms of the environment, in terms of the policy support, etc., possibly uh, the situation is not too different, right? So there, many of them are being promoted on top down, and many there are few again success stories. I am also aware of. I have visited also good number of FPCs and FPOs, right? Some of them are uh, again working well if the promoters and supporters uh, are. Are, uh, good but in general they are also struggling they are also struggling one aspect second aspect right second aspect also in many places yeah again of course like uh, amul cooperative of course it's an empowered cooperative one of the main features of amul cooperative is that amul cooperative has a good share in the overall market uh, market value or uh, value chain that is set right if you take milk and milk products and uh, all, all those things total value amul has a good uh, control and it passes on much of the share to the farmers much of the share to the farmers so whereas many of these uh, new cooperatives that are emerging Right. So do not have this integrated model of uh, Amul. They are trying to work in limited way, linking with some market agency, market company, etc. Right. As their appendages, not as the fully empowered cooperatives. Right. So therefore, uh, I am skeptical. Uh, I'm, I'm skeptical of these uh, APOs succeeding. Right. So even if they succeed, so um, that uh, it would be the other players, bigger players, agribusiness players, et cetera, who would end up capturing much of the value of these uh, 
and the farmers would be left with a limited thing, right? Apart from other legal and other complications. So this is my uh, first cut uh, uh, impression on these uh, FPOs, more so the uh, FPCs. Thank you, Professor. Uh, here's another question. Uh, thank you for a fantastic overview of cooperatives. I wanted to know your thoughts on the critique Mm -hmm. the cooperatives involve a lot of administrative labor and interpersonal relationship management, yeah. which itself is a lot of labor for members. Yeah. Some people oppose cooperativism for ideological reasons that oppose collectivism in decision making and resource allocation altogether. Does this mean there is ideological disposition suited to cooperatives and one that is incompatible with cooperatives? Yeah. Uh, can I can I read that again? Yeah, yeah it is RS. Uh, RS. Okay. Uh, thank you for being over with COVID. I wanted to know your thoughts on the critique that COVID is in a lot of administrative labor, uh, which itself is a lot of labor for members. So some people oppose cooperativism for ideological reason that oppose collectivism in decision making and resource allocation. Does this mean there is ideological disposition suited to cooperatives or one that is incompatible with cooperatives? Anyway, so I will try and uh, attempt uh, uh, and, uh, the way I have understood. But the first part of the question says that uh, 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 it may be, you know, is it an hassle to run cooperative? That's how I see that thing. That, so there is a lot of uh, effort to be made and uh, and we have to thrash out uh, differences, etc. Right. Right. Yeah. So <clears throat> any, any or running any organization, right, involves a lot of effort, right? Cooperatives would, of course, need, uh, of course, some extra effort. You may have to walk a little extra mile, right? Because they're, as I said, different form of organizations. So given the, the larger goal, right, the larger purpose uh, and their uniqueness, yeah, some extra effort may have to be made. But once we, once we learn, right, once we learn, right, as to how we can uh, you know, better govern, better administer, etc., right, then Thing should help us, right? Even if there is a conflict, right? So we, we know how to resolve it, right? There could be a challenge when there is a first time there is a crisis, that time when there is a conflict. But once we learn in a democratic way, right, we know how to resolve that well next time. So I would again pose a, uh, give a parallel to this. So cooperatives are a democratic organization, so therefore there is plurality and therefore there are challenges. That's how this question comes up. So, should, should if I pose counterpose this question to democracy at a larger level, it's an hassle to run democracy, right? At any level, larger level or a grassroots level, it is a it is an hassle, right? So what is the what is the mechanism? So is it to therefore no 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 it is not possible that we can't run democracy. Better we have someone one one dictator or whatever uh, so that uh, he or she can dictate and we all follow, right? Uh, so so therefore it's the same question. It's a question about democracy and uh, and therefore way of right managing a democratic organization managing i mean right in the in the instrumental sense also they have to be of course governed with uh, with the principles of participation reciprocation accountability all taken together and we have to learn right so therefore higher forms of organization requires adherence to higher principles initial difficulties should be there but once we learn, right, then the things become difficult. So therefore, that that is an that should not be the basis on which it is like throwing baby with what mud water. I say that is how I respond to that question. There is another important question from Professor A. M. Jose, who says, uh, "My only concern is how to mobilize the people and ensure community participation in cooperatives." I feel. This, I feel, is the most important concern in India. Right. Yeah, it is, of course, the concern all over, right? Organizing cooperatives, right, has been a challenge, right? 
Uh, of course, I, I was listening to one Russian scholar recently. I was in JNU. He was uh, trying to make a presentation on cooperatives in Russia. And uh, uh, of course, uh, we all know with Russia, USSR had a long history of cooperative. But he was currently saying uh, the point that it is not easy now to mobilize uh, uh, like that, right? Of course, uh, uh, there is some historical context there, no? but uh, even at a, at a uh, general level and also given my own argument, yes, we need to proactively mobilize. That's what I have said, right? Right. So what is the way, right? I said that these are not cooperatives or like companies. We produce for the sake of uh, something to be produced for profit sake. No, not like that, right? So these are organized right to meet various various uh, and uh, diverse basic and other needs of the society and community right let us say if it is a just uh, in, a, in a, just as an example if a hospital has to be organized assume that we think in terms of that okay hospitals will be run on a collective basis right and if that is the way of uh, you know organizing our uh, uh, hospital or health deliveries right health delivery. So it is a need for people. Health is a need. They health, they are to seek uh, therefore services, right? So they have to come together because they need, they have to meet this need, right? So then therefore, uh, in, uh, in a top-down uh, kind of a formation, so you uh, uh, say give targets like even for the FPCs we have given a target you have to go and mobilize farmers forcibly they even don't pay share capital uh, NGO will say government will say we will pay your share capital partly fully etc and farmers are not sure whether I should be part of it I don't know what will I will get all these things but if you match this when I am saying match the need Cooperatives, it's not as I said, top down, they match the respective needs and there is a need for members on their own to volunteer because cooperatives are also democratic and a voluntary organization. Once you have this inbuilt uh, way, right? Uh, it should, so only operationally, you may have to mobilize, right? Operationally, but uh, of course you may have to also therefore bring in this uh, whole, uh, no, uh, when I say social movements that cooperatives, not for any kind of getting some subsidy or any such thing, for meeting our needs of employment, housing, education, marketing, production, whatever. So automatically people would look for, right? Uh, uh, so, so which cooperative I should join or which cooperative we should be forming, uh, people on their own should be doing that also. If Because the whole, as I said, uh, the we have to elevate the right uh, the level of cooperatives and it will come both at the level of policy and practice so if that happens then this uh, this difficulty that currently we visualize i should not be there that is my uh, my take right of course it's uh, at a level of the theory and the practice uh, principle i am saying uh, uh, mobilization is not uh, uh, easy because given the lessons our lessons so that we need to do it differently, match the needs, people would automatically uh, uh, would be coming forward. Uh, there is a question uh, from Mona, which if, just to summarize, it is what are the structures and the alternate steps that we can take to be, you know, to make the existing cooperatives more cooperative or in another way to look at it, to move towards this cooperative model. In other words, what can we do now? Yeah, right, right. Uh, right. What can we do now for this? Right. Yeah. So, in fact, uh, 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 Dr. Mona, of course, anyway, for recently for the committee, uh, there is a government appointed committee uh, to frame a new policy on cooperatives. So I have written a paper. If if uh, Dr. Mona can send uh, uh, send uh, uh, email, I will share. Very elaborately, I have said as to what this committee can do in terms of policy and making them work. Right, uh, that is there. Right, all that. Of course, I have said essentially. Uh, of course. Currently, that committee also will be reformist. They want to somehow um, see that the current cooperatives are made more vibrant. 
uh, uh, within the current uh, system, right? Uh, uh, though I am saying that they must elevate the cooperative, the role of cooperatives must be elevated. I'm telling them, uh, elevate their role. Don't make it instrumental, right? Instrumental, and don't make it uh, top down. Uh, I, 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 I've, I've, uh, I've told them, and I also shared some of the mechanism by which we can overcome the top down aspects, which was the reason for the failure of cooperatives earlier, right? How possibly we can promote more autonomous, more democratic uh, cooperatives and how we can also restructure them to overcome their problems of viability or efficiency. Because in the top-down model, all cooperatives, all sectors, all over three tier structures, because simply by policy, we, are, we were framing them like that, right? So I have suggested some of these, uh, um, uh, um, some of these uh, suge made suggestions, including uh, what kind of role cooperative should be playing, right? Yeah, so therefore within the system, we need to work, even if within the reforming it, uh, we need to uh, do it uh, differently. Right, we must accept them as uh, different kinds of organization. We must create the reforms, current reforms era. Right, the cooperative scope and role has been declining. Right, unless we create a level playing field at all levels ideologically, policy, practice, and with innovative instrument instru mechanisms. Otherwise, a current uh, even in the current system, it would be difficult to revive them. Thank you, Professor. Uh, one question uh, which I'll take from Yasin. It says, the vision shared in the lecture presents a model that calls for lofty ideals such as justice, equality, collective decision-making, environmental justice, etc. This calls necessarily for a full scope transformation in the moral and ethical framework of individuals and structures of society at large. In this sense, are cooperatives the natural byproduct and the organic fruit of such a transformation led by other movements and policies? Or can cooperatives, such as the educational cooperatives, contribute to such a moral and conceptual transformation? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good question. <laughs> well, it is imposing the fundamental question huh? uh, like that. Yeah, see. Uh, of course, why I went back to some of the basic issues uh, like the crisis of capitalism, the reasons for it, right? So I, I was trying to drive home the point that there are problems in terms of the, the logic and the principles, uh, both economic, moral, institutional, and, and such things, right? The, 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 the audience and the, the scholar is asking, right? Yeah, so therefore any uh, transformation would uh, require a right a, a transformation on all these uh, grounds, right, on all these grounds. So therefore, one thing is that we need new principles, right, new basis, right, of organizing the society, new basis for organizing the society and new principles, vis-a-vis -vis these principles, right. So there can be many other principles also. Like when I say that, okay, somebody may say that as a socialism has all the elements which can overcome this, right? So possibly we can explore them also. I also see in the cooperative principles, the potential for reversing those aspects, right? Uh, in all, all sense, morally, a cooperative, when it says that it is against greed, it is against accumulation, Right, Gandhi, of course, uh, when he also pro propagated our cooperatives, he was insisting on the ethical dimension of it, right? Ethical dimension of it, like that, right? Yeah. So therefore, uh, so therefore, if we can organize cooperatives on these lines, so yeah, it is towards uh, the larger transformation. It is not just tinkering in some particular area or uh, sector, because the crisis that is looming large is larger. And therefore, when I am proposing this, it is at that larger level, right? Larger level, both in terms of the basis and in terms of the principles. There is a question from a participant from Nepal, Sudhir yeah. Shreshta, who says, I have been studying the tea sector in Nepal for some time. Smallholder farmers were getting low price for tea leaves. 
Later, they formed cooperatives to bargain for higher prices. Now, some of the cooperatives have factories and process tea leaves and produce made tea. However, they could have also bargained through their engagement in farmers' unions. But farmers' unions is not well developed in the tea sector in Nepal. So my question is, are cooperatives being promoted as a depoliticized medium or as a substitute to political unions for addressing peasants' concerns? Another question, can farmers be effective in managing cooperatives and selling farmers' products post-processing? Yeah, yeah, it's a very lengthy question. It has a very interrelated aspects, interrelated aspects, right? So, of course, uh, it also is asking uh, political uh, you know, aspect related to the politics of organizing the, uh, the farmers, right? Right, of course, when we are now, and I am proposing this, right, inst cooperatives as institutions of future and as higher forms of organization, whole lessons are potential for uh, creating a, a new uh, system, right? So, at some level, of course, it is a political argument. It is a political argument. It is about reorganizing our society on, on lines of politics, right? Here, of course, democratic politics here, right? Co cooperatives are essential uh, in terms of creating democratic system, right? Economic uh, aspects, right? I'm saying because at the core is needs of people, right not uh, greed or production for the sake of production meeting the needs of people it could be peasants anybody they are uh, they need to get dignity they need to get effective employment effective prices right so economic uh, uh, equity right uh, and then of course problems of uh, issues of social dimensions right uh, uh, is also to be taken care of because cooperatives would uh, work against uh, any kind of uh, exploitation and uh, alienation like that. So it is, in a sense, a holistic kind of a thing. And of course, those certain specific points that uh, uh, the scholar has asked, right? So, but uh, to me, this is a political, larger political question of reorganizing the society, right? Though I did not mention anywhere the word uh, political, but this is the political economy aspect of reorganizing our, our uh, society. And uh, and uh, if in principle it is taken to the logical end, it should be resolving the problems that the scholar has specifically also highlighted. Thank you, Professor. I think we'll quickly now uh, round up yeah. a few of the other questions. Yeah. One question is, uh, uh, in what ways is the capitalist system dangerous? The, I'll, I'll just go over the two, three. Uh -huh. you can right, right, right. I'm seeing the right. second one asked is by Suhas Polhekar is uh -huh. asked the question of scale. In other yeah. words, how large can a cooperative get? For example, a cooperative like Amul yeah. starts to go to other states. Mm -hmm. And uh, should, like, sh shouldn't it, shouldn't we be protecting local cooperatives? In other words, shouldn't cooperatives have a optimal scale beyond which they Yes. Uh, they shouldn't. And right. the, the the third question is about trusteeship. Uh, can trusteeship be an option to individualism and the corporate system? Okay. I don't know if you want to take it. Yeah, quickly I will. Quickly and the start. last one is about is 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 cooperative model a Gandhian small scale model? So mm -hmm. first, what are the problems, the dangers of capitalism? Second, what is the optimal scale for yeah. cooperative? Third is trusteeship. How does that come in? Okay. And lastly, the Gandhian model. How yeah. does it? Right. right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, Dr. Joe's question on uh, what is the dangerous aspect of uh, maybe uh, capitalism, right? Of course, uh, we all, I also said that uh, post to you know the world war right the conflicts armed conflicts have increased right and uh, is that not dangerous and one of the reasons is uh, is all these aspects of greed right of course though we may not be having colonialism but uh, uh, the new colonialism is also leading to 
not to mention of course the the real danger of uh, uh, the uh, the you know human society or uh, the earth being at the verge of extinction if we do not act in terms of climate change that is the danger and the threat i visualize right and then of course in terms of the scale the question about the scale yeah of course ideally cooperatives work on the principle of affinity the basic level of organization has to be local right that affinity and such things are also important it is it is local but they can attain the scale they can attain the scale through integration different levels of integration right federations and uh, such things and at the same time right the point that he made recently we also saw a conflict between amul and uh, uh, nandini karnataka right right so therefore there is an argument that cooperatives cooperation cooperatives must cooperate at some level right because it is the question of livelihood of farmers of karnataka or gujarat right so therefore they need to converge at some level as to how far they would go right it's not cutthroat competition that is why i am telling the principle in capitalism it is cutthroat competition it will be not even oligopoly it has to be monopoly in cooperation that is not the principle it is everyone uh, everybody's existence right so therefore they have to come to an understanding as to what scale they would operate and how they would coordinate uh, for the betterment of all that is the that is the point yes is it uh, gandhian uh, trusteeship of course is also a gandhian uh, uh, principle right Uh, of course gandhi argued for mainly the reformism like uh, for for caste whatever he advocated that we reform ourselves right for cooperatives also he said we reform ourselves uh, 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 reform ourselves so like the gandhian model yes of course it is decentralized model but it largely emerges as a reformist uh, uh, model not in terms of uh, thoroughly restructuring right be it for caste differences or for economic differences a, a thorough reorganization is not what gandhi uh, advocated right yeah there are elements of gandhianism right gandhi also advocated cooperative way of life Uh, but not uh, the one where there will be disturbance to the existing structures that is how i ref reflect on those this thing i think i i i, I now i think i have uh, answered uh, uh, all those questions right they were very interesting questions i don't know <laughs> how far i have been able to respond to them maybe if anyone has any question or anything they can email also directly i can also be responding sure. sharing some of my papers also on on these uh, yeah we will we will share your papers with if you share it with us we can forward it sure, to sure, the participants sure. sure i shall do that i shall do that thank you so much uh, professor shailendra this was one, one of our best uh, discussions and and uh, uh, as the part the participants have shared this was a very uplifting and and enlightening uh, address uh, it really uh, helped us see how from from where we stand in the present we can take uh, purposeful steps towards a better future by building on uh, both our successes and our failures who who like you mentioned the the i think the operative term was learning that that if we if we we don't uh, uh, go for quick fix solutions we recognize it's a complex challenge but that it is possible and that it is in in tune with our higher nature that somehow if if we apply ourselves commit ourselves to it there is no reason why we cannot uh, embrace cooperatives as the model for for uh, society uh, i wish we had more time your i wish we could have heard your whole 90 minute <laughs> lecture but <laughs> unfortunately our 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 format does not allow us uh -huh. but hopefully there will be other opportunities in the future to to once again hear professor shailendra i uh -huh. would like to also thank our participants for patiently uh, uh -huh. participating sharing their their thoughts very enlightening comments and questions Uh, i'm sorry if we couldn't uh, deal with the questions at the level of depth that they probably required because of the shortage of time 
but we will also share with you professor shailendra's email address and and the papers that he would he, he will share with us and uh, you should feel free to continue uh, corresponding with him thanks thank you everyone for uh, for this uh, making this an excellent uh, interaction thank you professor again thanks uh, thanks dr Arash. thanks all right uh, so hope to uh, interact with all of you sometime thanks for participating and it was great learning for myself thank you so much thank you.